we're gonna go into basically let's let's talk about uh the Garden of Eden. You see, in dreams, do you notice how in dreams you become your like like your subconscious mind is showing you things, right? You're observing it, and you rem you may remember your dream when you wake up in the morning, right? But let's say, for example, uh, you become lucid in this dream, right? Do you notice how in this dream, let's say you're in an unfavorable situation in this dream where you don't feel good, everything's low vibe, everything just feels like fucking whack or whatnot. It doesn't matter who you were dreaming of, because I'm going to get into the topic of the magic now, in this, right now, what I'm talking about. So pay close attention. Do you notice how you could be dreaming of Angelina Jolie? It doesn't matter. Is Angelina Jolie really there? She's not there. You just She just appeared in your head. So it, that means that the dream is about you. But the whole thing is that in this waking state you're in, what does Angelina Jolie mean to you? That's going to represent why she was even in that scenario to begin with. So now what you would pay attention to is what the scenario, what the people, places, and things, and how they made you feel in that dream. Okay? And then you get to, to, to have a little understanding as to why even Angelina Jolie was in that dream. But was Angelina Jolie really in that dream? I mean, in, she was never in a place. She just appeared there. It's in your head, right? So do you notice how when you become lucid, right? You're not trying to think, right? To change your circumstances there. You do that here in this room, right? So here you create an image, right? And then you plant it in the body. So this is the masculine, you plant it in the female, and then you become emotionally involved with it. That's how you're creating here. So there you're already in a metaphysical state beyond the physical, only it's acting out in a form where you think it's physical because of the programming that's happening here. It's going to get you to realize why even in this state, the physical is made of 99.99% .99 empty space, but yet you think this is all fucking real, right? But in this, let's go back to the dream. Now you become lucid, right? Suppose you're in this low vibrational state that you don't like to be in. See, the way you change your circumstances there is you feel higher. You feel higher vibe. You, you start to feel like what you want to feel. And things will change around you. But it, that's, that's going to show that when you change yourself, everything else around you change because it's basically you. So let's suppose it that you fucking hate Angelina Jolie and she appeared in the dream. Everything's low vibrational. She'll change into somebody that you actually do like. Because it's happened to me in dreams where I, I'm around one individual and then she just morphed into something else. That was giving me a different feeling at that moment. But only because I changed the way I felt in that state. But you don't think because if you think you wake up. Why? Because the thinking is a manifestation of what's happening here as a man thinketh. In this realm we think to get ourselves into circumstances but people don't think. This is why you got financial gurus tell you men just simply don't think. They do not think in the words of Neville Goddard. Okay. But people think they're thinking because they're under mental activity and that doesn't constitute thinking, right? That's not, that's not thinking. So you're running on autopilot programs. You're kind of like a zombie, a mindless zombie that got programmed at birth all the way up to the age of seven. And now you run on automatic programming. But the purpose of thinking is that you get your goofy ass out of the hellish state you're in. Because the reason things feel like hell is because you keep repeating the same fucking patterns. And when things, you, you're in the same repetitive cycle, same repetitive cycle, that kind of feels hellish, right? So really hell is just you in a cycle that you can't get out of. But the moment you shed light on it and think, it's no longer hell. You made it something else. You can morph it. You transmuted it. But you get yourself out of that state. You guide with the masculine light, put light on the darkness, and you guide that hellish state. It's kind of like you guide your woman out of the hellish state that she's in, right? Because women are more emotional. And it's happened to me with my female. She gets into some type of modes and whatnot. And then I have to guide her out of that hell. And you know what? Afterwards, she's always telling me, man, you know what? I'm glad you told me that in the way you told me. Because it gets me to realize that, yeah, I was looking at it a certain perspective. But you really, like, put it in a way where I didn't see it that way. And that's the female or feminine energy submitting to the masculine energy. But you're going to probably look at it as a hierarchy thing because you're in your ego. And if what I'm talking about puts you in certain feelings because you got a lot of work to do and your goofy ass is still in your ego, lost in the fucking sauce. And we're talking about that. We're playing Hunger Games in this bitch. Big dick energy.
crazy. I don't have to structure my shit a certain way because there's people who feel a certain way with the way I say things or even speak saying that they don't like the way I come out with my energy sometimes. Go to another fucking channel, okay? Because I don't need people like that here to watch my videos. I need adults and people who are actually processing what I'm fucking saying, okay? So now let's go back into this. So when we talk about the lucid dream, right? You change your, your feeling. You, if you feel high or feel higher vibe, everything starts to change around you. You're in the metaphysical state, so you can't think there. You're already in the metaphysical, right? So now, do you notice how when you're in that state, you feel like it's so fucking real, right? But things just started to happen upon the feeling part. So now you somehow, you, you ended up there. But then you wake up and you pop back over here, okay? So when we talk about the Garden of Eden, right? Do you think a female just came out that, the rib of Adam? Okay. When you look at the word Adam, right? Adam is the masculine energy, right? Adam is a man. Okay. And Adam, I'm making sure my phone is not overheating. So Adam, for example, is, so everything was created with the word. So Adam is a manifestation of the word of God. That's why they call him Adam, Adam's apple. Okay. And then you have the Adam, right? Where... You can basically look at that as a molecule or whatever you want to fucking categorize it as. Okay? Now, we want to experience creation, right? So, in other words, that feminine energy, the perfect androgynous being was Adam. Okay? And God wanted to experience himself, okay, as Adam. Okay? The same way you're here as, I'm here as Zigzag looking at myself. But then I'm really God experiencing myself through zigzag. And I can experience myself in different forms by the things that I'm creating outside of me with the image of God. So I'm creating everything, people, places, and things. Okay? But in this state, everything is higher vibrational, higher frequency. There was no thinking there. Okay? So in order for you to create, you would have to have that split. This is where now, all of a sudden, this manifestation of feminine energy was formed in the form of a female humanoid okay but they're both white people right so people are not going to say well what what because we're talking about races all the time right but there's they're light beings so they're white people they're a manifestation of the masculine energy and it came out of darkness the darkness the formless substance okay see the whole thing is that upon this even happening we always talked about how adam had a uh first wife who was lilith who was a dark version of eve okay so this is the black individual that was already in there and this is how the version of eve that we know of in the bible came out okay is basically a white lady who came out as eve okay so now when you start to look at everything this is how now time space right became actually a uh a reality okay because the heart is connected to time Okay, so time, space. Now everything started to become more solidified. Everything started to become a little more concrete, right? Everything started to become a lot more realistic, right? And I'll tell you what's happening now up to the point that we came up to now, okay? Do you notice how every time, as time goes on, we, were, we had certain abilities. So I'm 44 years old. There was a point in time where I remember we went through the beeper stages. I remember that I was able to remember about 30 phone numbers. We were doing things a little bit differently. Even when we went out, we were a little more present with each other. But I noticed as time went on, technology made our lives a lot easier. We don't have to remember numbers anymore at the touch of a button. We could just call somebody. And even at the touch of a button, I can have a live stream with somebody in the UK and whatnot. You know, I can have a live chat with somebody in the UK, right? But here's the thing though. All these things were abilities that we were once able to do with our body. Our body is the latest piece of technology, right? But the thing is that we wanted to experience our creations. The same way we created the feminine energy, technology is feminine energy, okay? People, places, and things you're experiencing outside of yourself is technology, is a form of technology, and you could tap into certain individuals. Even sexual experiences is actually a download, okay? Which I'm going to get to in another video on how that's even supposed to be a divine uh, thing. Just like eating was a divine thing. Okay? And was our stomachs even designed to actually intake food the way that it's actually taking it. And why we're actually missing certain elements such as gold. As far as how we manifest it in reality as scarcity. And why it's only traces in our body. <laughs> so 
we fell in love with technology and how we keep creating things, right? So the same way, and we talk about these demons that taught the, the, the women how to wear makeup and how, and we, we taught men technology and, you know, they could teach us how to use weapons and whatnot. I mean, uh, create weapons, but they never told you to use the weapons, right? That's the whole thing. They taught you how to make weapons, but did they tell you how to, did they tell you to use them? No. So you just know how to create, but we fell in love with that kind of power, right? We fell in love with the kind of power that we have and the creations that we fell in love with, like females and whatnot. Technology, la tecnología, is things that get us further and further away from God. Because the more we uh, invent and come up with technology, the further and further we've gotten away from God. Okay, so the things that I'm able to do, like have a chat on live stream, for example, with somebody in the UK, we were able to do this at one point without the means of this type of technology, which is basically minuscule, obsolete shit. If you really know how to use your own human body, telepathy, clair clairvoyance, clairsentience, clair all, all these extra centuries, they're only extra because we, we stopped using them. We only just started using our common senses in the physical because that's what we fell in love with and felt most comfortable with. Right, but we wanted to experience that. That's the whole thing. And upon that, we forgot what we were able to do. You see, the whole thing is that there's people who know better, yet they still continue on their same cycle. So that means who really is in charge? Are you really in charge, or is something that that you inhabiting now, such as this vessel that is a product of your mind, it somehow took over? Okay, it took over. So now all of a sudden, um, it took the wheel. Right. So. You, you're no longer in charge. The animalistic nature is in charge of you. Okay. Meanwhile, you came here saying you're supposed to have dominion over the rest of the animal kingdom. But instead, the animals have dominion over you. And because you're not aware of that, then instead of animals communing with you, animals run away from you. Because you're expressing fear. Because now you don't know who, you, who and what you are. So when you're expressing fear, and you go out into the woods and you see an animal, then... The same way animals run away from you, you it's because you're, you're, you're in fear. You have that fear in your heart. That's why when you meditate and you're in a deep state of meditation, you'll even see a cobra snake will actually meditate with you. It'll actually start because you see how when you play a flute, the cobra starts to dance, right? You emit a certain frequency, right? Every time that you're meditating and your humanity is offline. So you'll start to notice that even when you practice this and you go out in nature, animals start to actually be a little bit more attracted to you because you're not in your humanity as much. And you may come out even crazy to certain people. Even the way you may perceive things in life, you may look a little off, right? But ain't nothing wrong with that. Playing hung, uh, 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 squid games in this bitch. I was about to say Hunger Games, but this is Squid Games. Hunger Games for another time. 